Hi, so I decided to do the learning theory called behaviorism. So this is a learning theory involving science of psychology, and it in considers an individual's response to stimuli. It does not consider internal thought. And there are two types. The first is classical conditioning, and there is also operant conditioning. So operant conditioning can look like positive behavior being rewarded and negative behavior being punished. So for example, on the left there's prize giving, and this is where great results can be rewarded. It can also look like a teacher offering praise um, or positive affirmations for good work from students. So negative behavior can look like, for example, students being moved away for, from each other or given extra work to do from negative behavior. Classical conditioning is where an individual connects stimuli to something else happening. So for example, this dog here will connect that bowl to receiving food. In the context of a classroom, you can be a positive, happy teacher, and then students will connect your classroom to a happy place where they can be themselves and learn. So this was formalized in 1913 by John Watson, who was a child development researcher, How, but it is also said to be used by others earlier than that. So these are the positive things that I listed for using this learning theory. Here are some references. Thank you. Networked learning refers to a collaborative and cooperative learning and teaching via dialogue, negotiation, and group work, where information and communication technology ICT is utilized to enhance knowledge production and societal connections among learners, between learners and lecturers, between learning communities and their learning resources. The interaction can be synchronous, asynchronous, or both. Historically, it dated back to the emancipatory educational approach and also technological innovations such as web explosion and internet emergence in 1990s. When learners and teachers are all members of the learning community in network learning, where schools function as providing such an environment and organizing, supervising curriculum and uh, the cultural, societal, and political environment. Teachers are no longer sage on the stage. They are actually guide on the set and also learner in the community, while non-traditional learners can be more active and independent learners. The emphasis of network learning is not on technology, rather it focuses on networking people and resources. Yuri Bronfenbrenner was a Russian-born American psychologist. He introduced the world to his ecological systems theory with his 1979 book, The Ecology of Human Development. Ecological systems theory is a nested theory, nested meaning that settings or environments of graduated sizes are placed or stored one inside the other. As an analogy for this, Bronfenbrenner uses that of Russian dolls. The smallest doll in which the individual is housed is called the microsystem which is all of the direct influences upon the individual, such as parents and family or school friends, etc. The microsystem is housed inside a mesosystem, which could consist of influence such as an entire school or an entire religious group or people in your workplace, etc. The micro and mesosystems are placed within the exosystem, which is indirect influences on the individual, which could be things like local industry, parents' workplaces, the school board of trustees, etc. The outer system or outer layer is a macro system, and these are what the individual can't really change by themselves. They are things like governmental policies and dominant beliefs and ideologies, etc. Bronfenbrenner constantly developed his theory throughout his lifetime, changing his theory from an ecological systems theory to a bioecological systems theory. His initial theory placed the environment at the core of the individual's development, whereas later he placed greater importance on the individual's interactions within each particular environment. He called these proximity processes. Kia ora. My presentation is going to be on Vygotsky's best-known concept, the zone of proximal development.
Vygotsky was a Russian psychologist and the founder of social culture theory. The notion of ZPD refers to the space between learners' two developmental levels. The actual developmental level is determined by what they are able to do at the moment independently. And the potential level of development can be reached under a more knowledgeable person's assistance or through peer collaboration. Learners' ZPD can be fulfilled through the use of scaffolding. Scaffolding is a temporary support system. It should adjust to the needs of the student with the intention of promoting a deeper level of learning. Also, the support provided is gradually removed as the learner becomes more proficient. That's my sharing. Do you know Each learning theory involves interactions of students with their environment or others to support learning. All four of the learning theories involve interactions of students with the environment and others in order to support their learning. Behaviorism, as one example of a learning theory, has positives and negatives. Positives can include the fact it can create a healthy competitiveness among students to get the rewards. Negatives include the fact students who do not get rewards may give up, and students can start expecting rewards every time they do something good. Behaviorism has the potential for both good and bad outcomes as far as relationships and partnerships are concerned. It can get to the point where the same student gets all of the praise and rewards. This may be due to natural ability that other students may not possess. This could have the detrimental effect of making other students give up trying as they think that they'll never reach the rewarded level. This would negatively affect the relationship between a student and the teacher who is issuing rewards. Relationship may be a negative influence because of the virtual platform and physical distance of network learning. However, with teachers and students as uh, members of the learning community, a more democratic relationship may be created in network learning, with teachers being the guide on the side instead of sage on the stage. Ecological systems theory mostly considers the students' relationships with the environment around them, but also relates to interactions between others. Ecological systems theory is all about establishing relationships, and I believe it informs many of the core teaching values that are promoted. It is a more holistic view that incorporates student-centered practice. Many health and well-being models are influenced by ecological systems theory, such as the Fano, Hapu, and Iwi model. One of the Education Council's core values is that of Fanongatanga which also draws on ecological systems theories. With schools now run by the community, like Board of Trustees, it is vital to interact with the larger community. If a teacher forms a relationship with their students, they will get to know what knowledge that they bring from the other environmental influences and allow the teachers a greater understanding with which to scaffold the pupils' learning. Network learning can be appealing and attractive in engaging students in classes by using virtual and multiple modern technologies. However, it is expected for the teachers to be prepared and have a good time management and managing system of learning to grab students' attention and engagement. The four learning theories can support a productive learning environment. Behaviorism can feel good for being motivated and not so great for a lack of motivation. Ecological systems theory means a classroom community involving each student where they are from, their background and whānau to bring importance to the education. This can help students want to work hard. Zone of proximal development can also lead to more learning. Unlike Piaget's theory, which really emphasized the cognitive development based on internal influences, while the ZPD and the ecological system focused on external influences, such as social interactions. If the teachers are aware of the ZPD and the ecological system, they will recognize that not one size fits all. Teachers need to expand their knowledge and understanding of students' culture and the practices that support learning for diverse learners. And also, teachers must know their students' current abilities in order to design lesson plans and prepare teaching materials that meet the students' individual needs to avoid boredom 
and of frustration in the classroom. In network learning, it is a challenge, but also important for a supportive environment where group discussions, group tasks, and uh, studies can be aroused, and also with teachers giving timely feedback to and from the students. Behavioral and ecological learning theories can create productive learning spaces. Behaviorism can be effective and create positive teacher-student relationships. And with ecological learning theories, teachers can understand students' identities, where they come from, who they are, and how they interact with learning activities. ZPD, or the Zone of Proximal Development, can be used so that students feel like they are learning and making progress. So this is about where work is at an appropriate level. It is not too difficult so that they give up, and it is not too easy so that they don't see a point of doing it. They can feel challenged and feel like they are making progress. Students like success and can be rewarded when they do succeed using techniques of behaviourism. Um, and this can create a loop of doing more learning. The network learning theory can be managed using the ZPD, setting up appropriate work, and it can also use behaviorism to reward and make students feel successful. Final, family, and friends can be encouraged to work with students online to bring importance to their education.